this this chapter covers uh, basically two functions which uh, which do iterative search in two different ways. So iterative search is about uh, is about evaluating uh, different hyperparameter sets and and hopefully. Uh, uh, find the best ones or, or, or close to best ones in a way that is uh, usually cheaper than evaluating a lot of a lot of different options like we did uh, last week. So basically, basically iterative search is about trying trying different combinations of tuning parameters with the hope that that you will you will converge on a on a on a, on, a, on, a, on a good enough setting, uh, basically. Uh, so this this chapter's uh, learning objectives are to uh, to understand the the theory behind these two methods and also how to use these with with, with the tidy models package. Uh, yes. So. Uh, yeah, I think, oh, what should I do? Actually, I brought a different set of example code, but also we should first cover like, like the, uh, what does this try to do? Okay, well, um, so, so the first method is, is called Bayesian optimization. And uh, it works like uh, there are a lot of different tuning parameter candidates. And there's a, there's a model to predict uh, a distribution for, for each of these, these candidates about, and the, the, the distribution is about what but the thing, what is the uh, like the model performance metric for that specific uh, tuning parameter combination? And with with Bayesian optimization, we can we can we can have like multiple options to to choose from these uh, tuning parameter combinations, and then we choose one. Then, then, then evaluate the model at, at that point with the with with the usual re resampling method, and then we can update our model about these these distributions at 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 all the different uh, tuning parameter combinations, and we repeat this until we are we are satisfied basically. Uh, so there there's still quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of options to to have to how to use this patient optimization. Uh, so, for example, you still need uh, the whole space of the tuning parameter values that you want to uh, search in. So, so what are the options that you would like to evaluate? Uh, you can uh, yeah, sorry, uh, maybe I will go in a different order. Uh, Yeah. Okay. So, so so here we see like the true value of of our uh, of our 
performance measure, which is uh, which is uh, which is AUC at, at at the moment for a model, and we see the complete allowed range for the two tuning parameters. This is a support vector machine model, and and if if we have like a lot of uh, like a really dense grid and we evaluate it then we can see the like which is the best and 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 how it is distributed and with with the vision method at each point uh where is it okay maybe this so uh Uh, so we will have so this 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 uh, Bayesian optimization uses uh, this uh, Gaussian process model which tries to like which tries to estimate this this surface basically so so we have a surface with the with, with the true values so for each combination of of tuning parameters there's like the 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 actual performance measure that we can we can measure if we if we evaluate the model with resampling, but that would be really expensive. So this this Gaussian process model will try to so we use that to estimate this surface, and with each model evaluation, we will have a, a better estimation. So we start with a. a and it it's it's it has it's it's like a composite uh, Gaussian distribution at each uh, point, and it's it's good because because you can like calculate this estimation relatively easily. So it, so so if you have like uh, data from this service at the given number of points, then this this Gaussian model makes it possible to to efficiently have an an estimate for the for your performance measure at a new point, and it will not only have like a point estimate okay then let's say this is a, a new combination and i estimate that the that the that the auc is i don't know uh 79 but it will also have a distribution for it and uh so this Bayesian optimization will use this model to, to select the next tuning parameter combination to try out. Uh, and so one of the options is okay. Uh, So, so one of the options is is how to select the next tuning parameter combination, and I think that the default and the rec recommended method is the expected improvement, which takes into account the predicted mean, but but also its its variance. So if if there's like a bigger variance, then it 
it might be worse, but it, it might even be quite, quite better. And we will select the tuning parameter combination, which, which has the biggest expected improvement compared to the previously measured uh, parameter combination. Uh, yeah, so I think I will jump to some, some code and maybe then it, it will be easier to speak about the, the different options that you can pass to this model. So, so I will use the Palmer Penguins data set, which is quite small, which makes the modeling quite silly, but on the other hand, it will it will run fast, so that we can actually wait and see how wait and see how it how it runs. Uh, so we have like uh, uh, weight and different kind of lengths, and we have three different species of penguins in this. Uh, we we still see the the book. Uh, oh, the sorry, book. I I showed my R studio, but I guess I did it wrong. So I will do it again. Thanks for. Okay, there's also. Uh, okay, I share again. So sorry about that. Mm. So now you should see my R studio. Yeah, so there's like, okay, different kinds of uh, lengths and, and three different species. Uh, so first, the, the usual stuff, which is creating an, an initial split and uh, folds with cross validation. Uh, yeah, I, I also wanted to try this out and show you that I think uh, Joa mentioned last week that there's this use models package which can generate uh, like a skeleton code for you. And it, it turned out to be quite useful. So, so you should believe me that I, I use this this exact code with a tiny modification. So there's like two rows with missing data. So I needed to add a step unknown to the recipe. So it's this this generated recipe by this uh, function has, okay, we try to predict the species from all the other variables. We handle uh, missing data, we handle new values in the categorical columns. And the GLMnet model requires numerical predictors. So we create dummy variables. And we also uh, uh, normalize and remove constant predictors. There's also this uh, model specification generated for us and the workflow. There's like an, an example grid, which we won't use because we will use the, the Bayesian optimization. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so. We won't do this for now. So just let, let's see what parameters we tune. So there's a penalty and the mixture for the GLMnet model. Uh, And we can we can look at the parameters if we want to understand the, the default 
ranges. But if, if we believe in the defaults, we, we don't have to do this. So it's, it's just for, for information if you want to uh, change these later. So with this code, you can see what is the range that uh, the iterative search will, will move in and, and will try out. So, so one of our main functions is this tune base functions, which works with the workflow as a primary object. So with the workflow, we call tune base. And one, one mandatory argument is, is uh, the folds for, for calculating the, re the resampled performance metrics. Another, which I'm not sure what's the default, maybe 10. So the number of iterations. Uh, so basically, there are two ways to, to stop this, this iterative uh, optimization. One is after a fixed number of steps, and another is if there are there is no improvement for 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 a number of steps. So you can say that okay, stop if there's no improvement for three steps, but also do not under any under any circumstances do more than hundred steps or something like that. Uh, Yes, yeah, so and, well, what's a bit confusing for me is that like some of the parameters you have to pass to tune base, but others to control base, which seem very so I, I don't understand what's the like the organizing principle there. So control base have options like yes, yeah, so this how many so to stop if there's no improvement for 10 steps, this argument is in the control base and not in the tune base function. Uh, yeah, and you have to specify a metric set. And I think the, the, the first metric will be used to to optimize, but but all of these will be calculated. Yeah, and uh, so this initial so to to create the the initial model from which the the next parameter combination will be calculated, you either have to so you need some uh, some data in the grid, and you can pass in. An, an already evaluated grid, or you can just pass in on a number and it will create a grid for you. So just to start the Bayesian optimization, you, you need some data points where, where, you, where you already uh, know the value of from this surface. So let's see what happens. So it says like, okay, initialization complete. Yeah, it's 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 a silly model because it can have like a perfect perfect area under the curve, which is obviously not realistic. But this this toy data set is is too perfect, so. So sorry about that, but but hopefully we can still see what options. So here we can say that it says generating five thousand candidates. So from the whole parameter space, it 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 evaluates this uh, uh, distribution for the predicted. Uh, like metric, and then selects one one parameter option with the highest expected improvement. Then 
then actually evaluates that option with resampling. And then this whole step continues. Uh, so one thing I haven't mentioned is this uncertainty sample. So like these, these search methods are usually, so you have to be careful to not stuck in a, In a local optimum place, which seems good if you if you if you look around, but but globally it's it's not good. And for that, it makes sense to to fr from time to time, time to time evaluate uh, a new point, which does not seem good but might still be good. So like this this uncertainty sample is means that it means that now it's more important to me to not get stuck than to to have the highest expected improvement so the, this this is called in the book and i think like generally more generally is as well uh, the trade-off between exploration and and, and exploitation so, so basically this, this expected improvement already takes both of these into account to some point, but uh, you can say that, okay, I want, want exploration to be even more important from time to time and the, this uncertainty uh, tells you that I, I think there's a parameter that okay. Uh, yeah, so how many steps you wait until and, and until you you choose like a completely new new argument. Uh, and what? Yes, yeah, so the, these plots don't make any really much sense now, but usually you would see like uh, more noise and, and see which is the best candidate, but yeah, like it's, it's too, I guess it's too easy to separate these. So I think we covered like how this tune base uh, method works. It has some other arguments as well, like don't run for more than this limit. Also, uh, so so do you have? Uh, questions or notes for for this part um i have some questions about how did you pull out the skeleton for for the the recipe okay so like using this uh, package here use models yes yeah, so, so you, so, so this use models package has example code for some of the models. So it, it does not support all of the models. So I think these are the six six models that that it can generate uh, the skeleton code for you. So so GLM that is one of that. But for example, they don't have support for support vector machine models yet. And you have to specify the formula and the data, whether you want to, 
to have like the tuning code and like colors and variables is just about how it prints the results. So it's 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 not not central. And if if you run this function, it actually prints prints the code on the console for you. And I just copied copied this. And you can see that uh, one thing that you must do is to provide the resembles object. So, so this, this uh, function focuses on the, on creating the workflow for you, but not on the resampling part or, or, or any of that. So I, so I try to use this, like it's, it's, is it, now or no, that, that that's that's uh, that's what I wanted to know. But now uh, then you added um, a line here for the recipe, the step unknown. Yeah, actually, I also submitted an an issue to the package because I think that when they created it, it might have been a different data set, or I don't know, but it did not handle missing data so it it throw it through an through an error as as it, as it is so okay so you had to uh, because maybe there's something else to i don't know what step novel does uh, uh, so if there's a uh, Hmm, that that's a good question. So it's it's related to handling if there is like a factor column with a fixed set of values, and you have the training data set on which you train the model, and it, when you uh, when you evaluate the model, then you might encounter uh, new factor values that you haven't seen yet. And then you won't know how to predict, so it it like prevents this issue because it it will it will add the like a dummy value for for all the new values that that might appear only in the test set. Okay. Hey, uh, just a quick comment, I guess. Um, so I'm not too, too familiar with Bayesian statistics. Like I don't like, you know, the basics, whatever, but uh, so I'm wondering if there is some kind of a helper function, like, you know, auto plots or whatever it is to help you kind of guide through what you're doing. If that makes sense. Uh, you mean like have the, this, this intermediate Gaussian models and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, the recipe and everything is good. Just the whole tuning process. Uh, so for you know, yes. in regular grid grid search, there's like an auto plot and there's like show best, you know, select best, whatever. Um, sorry, I haven't read the chapter yet. But. Yeah, we, we have the the show best. So like, if if you have the results, like you can use like the same functions which. Uh, which you can use with a with a regular grid. Uh, but I I vaguely remember there's an there's an option to like save some intermediary results uh, about also this this Gaussian process if you want to understand that more detail but i don't remember like so in in the book okay maybe that uh, they created actually a video which is quite helpful i think so but but they don't have the so i i'm not i'm not sure if there's helper functions to create this or it just created internally so it's like they 
the axes are the, the, the initial parameters, uh, the dots are the are what it already examined, and I think the green is the current best. And you can see that. So this is about like where it is the best EUC. And what's important is, is this, this expected improvement for us. Did they uh, just write a bunch of, bunch of code or was that like a auto plot or something? I'm not sure because this is available as, as a video in, oh. in the book, <laughs> not as a like a regular R markdown chunk or something like that. So I suspect that it's, there's no auto plus for this, but but that that's a good good question. So I I unfortunately I don't know. Uh, you can see if we see some. So if if you call on the tune, it it just shows. Uh, like just the hyperparameters, eh? The measure, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here's this save GP scoring. Yeah, I, I, I don't, don't know if, if, if that helps you. It says that save intermediate Gaussian process models for each iteration. Uh, this option is only useful for teaching purposes. <laughs> But I guess you will still, yeah, well, it, we might ask actually Max, so, but I, I, I don't think the code, the, the book, the book talked about something like that. I, I don't remember at least. Okay, yeah, maybe this is a outside tiny modeling with our, maybe this is like a Asian statistical specific question, but I was wondering if there was like a easy beginner friendly function. Uh, I'll look into yeah, it. <laughs> I, 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 I would look at this this argument and see if if, if I can I can understand the results. <laughs> That's okay. my best guess currently. And the rest is same, right? Even like parallel over resamples, everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it 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 has like a lot of similar options options like tune grid, I think. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so there's another method for the same purpose. Uh, in the book, which is, uh, yeah, I think this is like, so it performs like a random walk. So at one point, it will select a random point from a, like a circle around the initial starting value. And you can specify basically the, the radius of, of this circle. And also, uh, you can, if, if you have like a few steps, you can continue like take the next step uh, from your current point or or your previous point and 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 here comes again the like the trade off between exploration and and exploitation so there's like Uh, parameters controlling if you uh, 
so it uh, so so like if 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 the new point has better performance statistics then it then you should uh, select that and then continue from that uh, fr from that neighborhood but it, but if it's worse if, if it's worse but only a tiny bit worse it it still might make sense to to continue from there if it, if, if it's a lot worse it probably makes sense to like like go back not sure if this yeah there's a mega video video and it won't always take like the same the same radius but like a random a random radius within an interval so so you like won't always continue from from the best point but from from worse points and then and, and it, it it again helps you like it it it, it helps you explore like new places basically so i guess for me the one good thing about it is that like it sounds even cheaper because you don't don't have to fit even a gaussian model to this space so you don't have to assume like anything about about the distribution of of how this true surface looks like uh, yeah but probably it's 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 harder to like reason about but it i, I guess they said that that both of these these approaches it's not like there's no proof that it's it works but it, it seems to work in in, in real life so uh, sometimes it, it seems to like make some silly choices or like it's it's totally random but but after some steps it so so most of the time it 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 explored this this generally good good area yeah basically uh so So I think so the parameters that are about whether to continue this this random work from the new point or not, and it will depend on how many points we we already visited. So if if we like if we, if if we, if we already explore the space quite well, then it's it makes more sense to to focus on the best results and not continue to explore if we if we haven't explored yet then it makes more sense to to, to explore uh, the space also if it's much better then it it's it it, it, it makes sense to continue there uh, and, uh, So let's again see some code. And I, I'm also not sure why it's called annealing. So like simulated annealing. So the the main function is doing simulated annealing, which is again in in 
most of the parameters quite similar to Toon Grid or Toon Base. It actually lives in a different package. So I think it's fine. Toon has, has exactly the same purpose as Toon, just it just it contains more specialized functions that are not so i guess it just didn't fit into it it, it would become too too big so again the main parameter is the workflow you must provide resamples and just to show show some 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 options so previously with the tune base I didn't uh, supply a forum info. Now I did just to show that if, if you don't want to use the default parameter ranges for the tune for the tuning grid, then here you can you can specify the ranges for so here you can like pass in a dials params object which you can for example, create like this, but you can also create it directly using this, these functions. And also previously I used the initial, like just a number to, like it's, 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 it's the easy, easiest and then the function will uh, create a space filling grid for you. But if you already have like a tuned grid or or you want to start with a regular grid, then you can you can pass that in. Uh, and again, in the control parameter, we have some some more parameters which are more specific to this method. Uh, like. Uh, how many improvement steps to wait? This restarting is about if if for some steps what you see is just worse and worse and worse, then you can jump back to the to the last uh, best result. So maybe not just to the previous step, but I don't know five steps ago was something good, and since then it it, it just worse and worse. Then 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 you can you can just restart for the radius it's it's an interval from which it, it will sample a radius for for the size of the step uh, flip i haven't tried it it's for discrete parameters so so like this 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 circle image makes sense for continuous variables but actually for for this these variables uh, you can either keep the current value or try a new one with with the probability I'm not sure what the cooling yeah so the cooling is about It's not like a, it's 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 about this this trade off between trying new values or sticking sticking with the best. So let's see. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So. So the fine tune package doesn't come with tidy models. Like it's 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 in the in the ecosystem, but if you just uh, write, so it it's not it's not loaded with with library tidy models. So you either have to like, okay, say library fine tune or specify these functions. Yeah, again, unfortunately, then my example is not not really good because like there's a perfect model.
Yeah, so basically what what else you can do, I think, is, is the same, whether you use this tune function or the tune base or the tune grid. So, so, so after you did the tuning, you can do the, the same thing for exploring the, the best parameter combinations, uh, seeing the results. And finally, you can use the select best. Then finalize the workflow. So what happened? Yeah. So this this better suboptimal was better than the previous step, but still not better than the initial best. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. So so if you are happy with the tuning then you can select the best model, finalize your workflow with, with that model, and you can uh, do a last fit. So it's, it's now not on, the, not on the resamples, but on the, on the initial training and test set. And if you evaluate that, you can see like uh, how your model performs realistically. So I think this, so these are the two, two functions that this chapter introduced, but there are also other, other options to, to tune. Uh, like the, the the racing method, I think was was like mentioned in in the previous chapter. Yeah. So. So that's that's all I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, it could probably have been better if I understood it more. So. If, 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 if you have questions, I'll try to try to answer it or forward it to Max or something. So did, I, did, I, did any of you use such methods? M maybe not with tidy models, but another package or ecosystem, or, or did you use tune grid or like a grid search previously, or what did you use? I personally never used it. Like, uh, yeah, like Daniel was saying, like, I think this is, uh, you have to have a certain amount of understanding of Bayesian statistics for this chapter, which I don't, and I, I should. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm unfortunately me neither, so but I, I didn't have the time to, to understand the statistics behind it as well, so it would like take, take more than one week. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Anyway, the, the in the, the the meaning at, at least is that he's trying like some sort of uh, probabilities for ident to identify which one is the best 
uh, parameter for the optimization of the model. Yeah, so, so like yeah. there's there's two models. One model is is what you uh, fit and and evaluate, and there's another model which predicts your performance metric at, at, at a given combination of. But basically, yeah. with bias, he uses like a sort of. Um, predicting values uh, which are like the, mm, the most mm, probable, um, like um, using the, the, the standard mean and the standard deviation. He said like the, the parameter values as the best ones for for your model, and he does with uh, like a sort of uh, considering the event uh, like the prior and the posterior uh, probabilities, which are like uh, the probability that um, like an event can happen if some something else has already happened. So like. Um, it's uh, th there is a condition for which an event uh, would happen because another one has already um, verified, basically. So um, for, for this this is why he does some iteration and says if if the iteration is satisfying and verified and and like a sort of uh, um, following the line. So the, the, the point, the result that he found, he, he found uh, is satisfying, which is the, the, because it's subsequent to the previous point in a, in a certain way that uh, it can be satisfying within the, the model, he stopped stops iterating. Otherwise, he keeps forward, basically. Uh, so, um, the thing uh, that is difficult to me is uh, a function already made. So you basically have this, uh, this function to bias. And then you know that you can add options inside, tuning and everything. Um, you know that the the, the 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 bias formulas. If you go, um, like he does resamples of penguins falls and. Uh, and here is fine because you have uh, you need more samples to to set up a parameter and say that 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 value for that parameter is the most probable one to be uh, the correct one. So the one that is predicting the real value. So you resampling and set and see if the uh, then, then, then you set uh, like the number of iterations. Uh, you set to twenty, but then you, uh, with control bias, uh, you say that uh, after five iteration, if there is no improvement, then you go forward. Without it. Yes, yeah, so this this <laughs> twenty is yeah. like a it's it's like a maximum. So it it won't do like exactly 20, 20 iterations, but but maximum twenty and stop earlier if there's no improvement for for this number of steps. And then what is the initial five? The initial is about the initial uh, grid. So it's like. Uh, 
Where is it? Sorry. So it is like before this Bayesian optimization can start for, for this Gaussian model to work, you need some, some points, points at which you measured your, your performance metric. Mm. So that, that initial is like, what's here, these crosses. So before you start your Bayesian optimization, you calculate the performance metrics at, at some points. And here I just said like, like arbitrarily, okay, just it, this means that this, this initial grid should be uh, of five points and it will be created like with a space filling design that was mentioned in the previous chapter. And, and, and after there's this grid, then can the Bayesian optimization part uh, start. So, so like the behind statistics needs for these, for these, for these estimations to, to have some initial values to start. <clears throat> and uh, what the, the, the result of the application of this function, the output basically on the console is like, is showing, it shows the number of iteration. Is that right? Is that, uh, as we have seen uh, before, no? It, uh, yeah, it, it, like... it's, it prints a lot of stuff. Yeah, it, it's just for your information. So it's, it's not important from the prospect of, of like, what is the result. Mm -hmm. But because yeah. if you have 20 iteration, you have, uh, like, like here, he stopped at 10. So the 10th iteration is the last one, no improvement for 10th iteration. Yeah, it's, it's because of, of this, this argument. Uh -huh. Otherwise it went through. So I said this to a large here. number, yeah. then it, it will go to, to do those 20 iterations. Uh -huh. Okay, so while the other one, what are the, the, the differences? Because uh, you have the, 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 the graph with the, um, like the area uh, as well, that, but then you have the points with the, um, the, 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 um, the arrow pointing to the next step. So the next value. So it's uh, a sort of like predicting the next. You mean this one? The, the second, the second, uh, the second method. Yes. Annealing. Did this chart or what? Yes, this simulated the annealing. Uh, I don't know how to do this one here. So it's like you have, this is the, we are still searching the parameters or this is what, what uh, point outside uh, the parameter boundaries. So this is, our, this is the parameter uh, as well as before. So we are, we are like, we are, um, the, our objective is to set up the parameters. Uh, so it's, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but I think it, so this, this method performs the same task as, as the BVS. So it's just an, an alternative to the tune base. Okay. So it's it's like a different a different method for for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. So here we we don't have like a Gaussian model, but we just try 
different values that are close to the previously tried and see if it's best then continue mm -hmm. in some direction. Mm -hmm. So it's like a sort of an alternative to the Gaussian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so these are these are alternatives. Yes. So basically, the 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 with the the Gaussian is the best the, the foundation because it says that when you um, repeat uh, replicate. Um, uh, an outcome, um, like when you resampling, so you replicate um, many times, the parameters tend to be um, quite similar to the um, very close to the real ones. And this is linked to the central limit theorem so it like it forms like a curve, a, a bell, normal bell, where the uh, a large number of iteration shapes a, uh, the a bell curve, and the the mean and the standard deviation tend to be closer to the real ones. So basically, the Gaussian the is is the 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 basic one. So the the other one. It's exactly the same, but what does it do? It, it does point. Like uh, it's, 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 a, it's a different method, and it it has like no no assumptions. So like the the Gaussian method, it 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 assumes that this surface is like continuous and and like close to these normal shapes it doesn't have to be exactly like that but i i guess it, it should be continuous and this other method can also handle like discontinuous surfaces but i don't think that that comes up often uh -huh. but maybe with i i don't think that probably with if you have like discrete values you probably can't use the base method I'm I'm not sure, but I assume that mm -hmm. that you can only use that with with continuous values. I guess I guess our time is up. Mm -hmm.